Hi, this is clip two du from Dupe My Identity. So, uh, let's clip. Uh, you, we saw the various different types of the ratios to analyze the firm. Now, this is uh, one way to apply the ratio analysis, especially the um, to look uh, by looking at the return on asset. So first of all, your return on asset is net income divided by total equity as we saw in uh, the previous one, previous slide. And in, in fact, there are three components we can actually divide. So first component, you, you can actually change it like a net income divided by sales, multiplied by sales divided by total asset, multiplied by total asset, divided by total equity so this all cancelled out right and then you have ROE and it means that ROE has three components first one is profit margin second is the this is total asset turnover and the third one is the equity multiplier so profit margin total asset turnover equity multiplier profit margin basically is about the performance the cost and the sales. So this is about the profitability itself, right? So if you control the costs effectively, or if you make more sales, then your profit margin increase, right? And then, if uh, the second part is the, the total as a turnover, so as I pointed out, in the previous uh, clip, this is about the use of assets. How effective you use of use assets, and if you effectively use the assets, so make more sales relative to the same amount of asset, it increases. The third factor is the leverage, which means the amount of that relative to your asset. So. There are three ways to increase the ROE. First, profit margin increase. So you control the cost more effectively, reducing the cost, basically the main issue. The second one is the efficiency. So if you increase the efficiency, such as you adopt a new technology, so even though you use the same asset, you can make more sales, then you can increase the ROE, the profitability. And third one is actually is about the amount of debt. So if you increase the debt, you can actually increase the profitability. And it, it is true because uh, you know the profitability basically uh, measured by ROE is the profitability for the owners, the equity holders. And if you, you know, borrow more money, then you basically make more returns if you still you know make, uh, invest the same money. So, you know, increasing borrowing may increase the the profitability for the equity holders. However, uh, increasing all the, you know just increasing too much is not a good very idea because uh, um, it is also it carries it also carries the risk of the asset. So, if you increase too much debt, the increase the debt too much, then your risk level is too high. And at least there is a way to increase the ROE by changing the leverage. That's the meaning of the DuPont identity. So that this is the DuPont identity. DuPont identity is the rule made by the guy named DuPont. And basically, it says there are three components. You know, at the next slide, you see profit margin, total asset turnover, and equity multiplier, and controlling the cost, managing the asset, and the financial leverage. Three factors actually may change the profitability of the firm. So, there's there's a reason why we learned the DuPont identity. Suppose you have problem in your ROE, so you think that the, your ROE has, is too low, which means that your firm is not really profitable, then you can immediately look at these three factors. Which one lead the low ROE? And it may be the, the, the profit margin, low profit margin, maybe the low total asset turnover, maybe the low equity multiplier. 
And if you believe that one of them is low, then you can actually try to increase um, the the factors. You know, maybe the controlling more, the more effective the codes, or you you use the more as more effectively, or you have to increase the leverage. Now this is the example of the Dupont identity. So the ROE of this firm is you can directly uh, calculate, but if you don't have one, then and you have these three ratios, then you can compute the ROE like this. So the ROE will be the fourteen percent, and you can verify also using the the balance sheet uh, uh, in the previous uh, slides. Now, let's look at the growth rate. First of all, the growth is quite important for the firm. To, f to make firm survive, firm needs to grow. Because if, if firm does not grow, then it doesn't generate values. So, you need to find out what, like how much growth firm can make using the resource you really have. Before looking at this growth rate, let's look at the, the, the other ratios that may be related to growth. So after net income, so you have net income, right? There are two ways to use this net income. One is the payout dividend and the other is the addition to retained earning, right? That's what we learned. So we denote B as a retention ratio, which is the proportion of the addition to retain earning divided by net income. So suppose your net income is like hundred dollars, you pay forty dollar dividend and six dollar addition to retain earning, then B is sixty divided by hundred, which is sixty percent, and one minus B is simply just forty percent, because there are only two ways to use the net income. And this is quite important because the money to retain earning may be used as an internal source of fund. So, if you like the purpose of the retained earning, the adding retained earning is basically to tr prepare for the money that can be used as an internal source of funds and this is sort of the money that you can actually use for investment. So this B is quite related to the growth rate. So let's look at one by one. Before you now we compute the dividend payout ratio for this firm and cash dividend here is 121 million dollars and the net income is 336 uh, 363 million dollars. So dividend payout ratio is 33.3 percent. Therefore, the retention ratio is basically this addition to retending divided by 363 million, so 66.7 percent. Again. The retention rate, some of the retention ratio and the dividend payout ratio should be 100% since net income may be used only two ways, no more than that. One dividend, the other adding to retained earnings. So let's look at the internal growth rate. Internal growth rate, the definition of this internal growth rate is suppose that there is a the assumption we use. The retained earning is the only source of financing, so we don't make any external financing. We don't borrow more money, we don't, we don't issue more stocks, we only use the retained earnings as a, the only source of the funds to invest, make an investment. Then the possible growth rate for the firm is the ROA times the retention ratio divided by 1 minus ROA times retention ratio. Means that if you retain more, your internal growth rate increase, right? So in this case, 
ROA is 10.12% and the retention ratio is 66.7%. If you calculate this, the internal growth rate is 7.23%. So without external, any more external financing, this is the growth rate you can make. Now the next one is sustainable growth rate. This is a little different concept, but more realistic concept. Now, so so the problem of internal growth rate is that we just assume that we use the retained earnings as an internal source, like source of fund, no more external financing. One problem here is if you just uh, do not, you know, change in that and just adding in retained earnings then your leverage ratio change like it basically decrease a lot right because you retain you ret retain earning increase right by adding more retained earnings you know and your debt never changes so your leverage declines which is not realistic because firm usually try to keep their leverage ratio constant you know so this Sustainable growth rate assumes that, well, we make some external financing, but the only, the amount of the external financing, especially debt financing, is to, the proposal is to keep the leverage ratio. So, how much the firm can grow using internally generated funds, which is the retained earning, and issuing that to keep, to maintain a constant debt ratio. So you keep the leverage, the proportion of debt and equity just to remain the same so you probably need to issue more debt to do so and you use that money to grow so basically the, the available fund grow right because you have retained earning plus the debt that you can actually uh, that you borrow to keep the constant debt ratio so you know intuitively you know we can easily uh, forecast that the sustainable growth rate is higher than internal growth rate since we have more funds and the formula is also very simple you know first one the uh, internal growth rate you have ROA times B 1 minus ROA times B now instead of ROA you use ROE so ROE times B divided by 1 minus ROA times B here the ROE of this verb is 14% and B is still 66.67%. So if you calculate, then you have 10.29% as a sustainable growth rate. So the difference between, again, internal and sustainable growth rate, the internal growth rate, the, the source of fund is only retained earnings, so your leverage ratio, the debt ratio changes, actually lower, the declines. Sustainable growth rate, however, you know, the sum that the firms tend to keep the debt ratio constant, so they, their value fund is internal source retained earning plus the debt they borrow to keep the constant debt ratio. Therefore, you actually have higher system growth rate than internal growth rate, and which one is more important? Well, I mean, both important growth rate that you can actually estimate, but I think the the realistically, you know, sustainable growth rate may be more, you know, realistic since, you know, firm, like, since we assume that the firm never, like, firm try to keep their constant debt ratio. Right. So how to determine the growth now? So growth rate basically has four co components, you know, right? Because, uh, you know, if, if you see the sustainable growth rate, there's ROE factor and the retention ratio factor. And we know that from the DuPont identity, the ROE has three factors, right? Profit margin, total asset turnover, and equity multiplier. So there are four factors now. Profit margin, operating efficiency, reducing the cost. Total asset turnover, you have to use asset more efficiently. And financial leverage, choice of optimal debt ratio. That the reason why we call it optimal debt ratio is if you increase that too much, then you know, uh, you know, simple calculation, you can have more profitable profitability, more growth. But it's not really true because there are some cost 
you know, the cost for avoiding the bankruptcy or the increasing for the possibility of the bankruptcy arise. We're going to learn that part in chapter 13, probably the last chapter we're going to do in this class in capital structure. And then finally, it's about the B, retention ratio, dividend policy choice of how much to pay out, pay to shareholders versus reinvest in the firm. So, you know, people, some people just prefer to get the dividends, you know, uh, this this is quite wrong actually because uh, you know I mean paying out dividend decreased the uncertainty that's good but it also decreased the possibility the amount of the money that the firm may use as an internal source of money and internal source retain earning is the cheapest money the firm can use so there may be some optimal dividend payout ratios existed uh, Usually, you know, you have to compare with your benchmark firms, your competitors, you know, your good competitors. Now, why we evaluate the financial statements? You know, that's actually the very, very, you know, um, good question. Because, uh, you know, the reason why we learn these so many ratios is to analyze the financial statements. And there are uh, internal uses and external uses. You know, internally, you can use the performance as a performance evaluation you know you can compare the, the divisions you can actually compare very broad years you know uh, compensation you know based on the performance and you can see the change in ratio things like that so internally you can use that also you can also use this as a uh, when you plan for the future you know this is good guy you know past always gives some lesson for the future so uh, you can also uh, you can have some lessons. You know, le you can learn something from this ratio analysis for the future planning. Now, externally, you know, creditors, the, the borrower, uh, lenders they may use this information. Uh, wh whether the, this firm basically uh, has enough uh, ability to pay back their debts, the supplier, customer, stockholders, any. The government, even you know, any types of the agents, eight types of the uh, market participant may use this information, and that's why the SEC require all publicly uh, listed firms, um, the traded firm, should file their financial statements within certain period, like the annually, quarterly, you know, and so on. Benchmarking now. We have, we, you know, there are, we have a bunch of ratios, you know, and as I said, to use it, we need some benchmark. Without them, then it's useful because uh, like a 30% net profit margin, we don't know how good it is. We need to have some competitors, you know, so comparison benchmarks. Usually uh, people use like uh, the, the pull of the firm's competitors, you know, as a benchmark, you can usually find them in a report. And so, such as time trend analysis. Now, you can also compare firm's performance over the time, like a time series analysis or peer group analysis, as I said, compared to similar company within the industry. And you can use SIC code or NA. NAICS code as a category of the industry and usually industry factors are very important because a certain industry has certain characteristics so you can compare like the four like the four digit two digit SIC code you know based on them you can you can you know find the companies and actually the size matters too so si like sizable companies compare with them like the see the average of the ratios and if your ratio is too far from them then you have to invest in more now what's the problem you know potential problems that you can have uh, with this analysis first of all conglomerates uh, there are some conglomerates in the United States uh, mostly now right because uh, I believe we can say the GE was conglomerate before but now they actually uh, sold a lot of other function uh, from so uh, I don't think really you, you can find Really say conglomerate in the United States, but in many other countries there are many conglomerates such as Samsung in South Korea They have like insurance company they have electronic company, you know, they have um, 
also they ha they also have security company you know, there are many 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 companies they run together in the same business group you know, India Tatar you know China you know Latin America even European countries you know they have one business group under them their subsidiaries companies you know and it's hard to compare with other competitors you know because uh, they're so unique global competitors you know global issue is also important so if you look at the GM ratios then you probably need to compare with Toyota too, because Toyota is big competitors however because of difference in markets like the Toyota is listed in Japan and they all have big operation in Japan too so you probably need to correct something you know to uh, you cannot directly compare different accounting procedures same things you know the sound like US firm use the US gap but many other international companies use the international gap IFRS you know and international gap is quite different to US gap different fiscal year and that's, this, that's a problem also problem of the, among the US firms too because the fiscal year are determined by company not by law so you have some fiscal some companies start with March some companies start with July some companies starting with the January it's hard to compare differences in capital structure you know every company has different capital structure seasonal variation and one-time events you know that's basically the company specific events or company specific problem or sometimes the seasonal problem to compare those type of problems with others then you need to correct them something you know because uh, you know so like ice cream company you compare with other like food company then ice cream company probably their sales increase a lot in the summertime and decrease in winter time but you, if you directly compare with the like the other food company then you actually you resort to this story right because you know your summer performance too good winter performance too bad so you need to correct that so there are certain you know types of the problems that you can have in analyzing the financial statements still the ratio matter ratio is very important and very good way to compare the firm to analyze the financial statements and sometimes we really uh, you know you know the, the the thing you have to remember is the f first slide you know you have to know the usage of the ratio so and uh, you have to also know why it is important